And a welcome to the Inland Sports TV show. Jeff Gorham, my name is Pep Fernandez. Jeff, we have a massive show, guests all the way around. You were at 66ers Media Day. We got UCR softball in the house. They're playing great softball. I mean, 18-game 18, 18 winning streak going into Was it 18? 18. 14. It was close. Uh, yeah, well, 20, 30, 100, <laughs> whatever it was. And we got a lot to get to. 13. It should have been 14. It should have been 15 in my book. Um, but we've got a lot to get to, but we're going to lead things off right now with a huge soccer match taking place on Thursday night at Citizens Business Bank Arena, Major Arena Soccer League action, as the San Diego Soccers will pay a trip to our Ontario Fury and join us live on the line right now, one of the newest members of the Ontario Fury, former national team star Jermaine Jones. Jermaine, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing good. How are you guys doing? We're doing fantastic. Now, Jermaine, there's a lot of hype going into Thursday night at Citizens Business Bank Arena as Landon Donovan, a Redlands native, will lead the Soccers against your Ontario Fury. Are you excited to go up against Landon Donovan in this MASL matchup? Um, I would say I'm excited in general for the game, so I came up from retirement and um, right now, I'm back to the field. I'm not really focused on that. Um, yeah. um, I have a lot of friends for him, you know, a lot of the games we play together, but he comes in my stadium, so I want to try to get the three points and send him back to San Diego. Now, Jermaine, I know arena soccer, a long, long time ago, I was actually the play-by-play -play guy for the Fury, but I know arena soccer is very much different than the outdoor game. Was, was there an adjustment period for you as, as you went indoor to play this game? Um, I, I, I was pretty uh, surprised. A lot of people told me that I playing it would stop him. Like, but to me, no. I played a. I played it. Um, I, I I feel like I go back to the to the roots. You know, where everything started. And, and um, back in Germany, we played here a lot of uh, small field chess bands and for uh, with the youth teams and, and on the street. So, in uh, it was not it was not that cool. And um, I didn't think here with the performance I do on the field and um, the game. Um, everything works pretty good and. Uh, I just enjoy it. It's not a real thing from, from, from the game itself. And Jermaine, it should be a massive crowd on Thursday night as, as Landon Donovan and the Soccers come to town. Um, and, but the Furies in the playoff push, so not only is this game just magnified because they're kind of, you know, pitting it. You can see here the, the poster, Jermaine Jones versus yeah, the it's like a heavyweight Donovan. fight. The showdown in O-Town, yeah. But, uh, but for, for the Fury, Jermaine, this is a big match. You guys are still trying to make that playoff push and punch your ticket to the postseason. Exactly. Yeah, we. I think since I came, uh, since I came in, we really changed the the, the whole outcome of the situation. I think the team made a performance back of five last three games we played, and um, and it showed that, that we scored a lot of goals. And, um, yeah, we we made it. Oh, now it's a different team. It's a different team. We want to play Diego at home. We, we know that uh, we want to take time to play out. But uh, I think at at, at, at the, the bigger picture, yeah, we want to try to get the. Uh, get to the playoffs and play against the team and see how far we can go. Well, Jermaine, we appreciate the time. Again, that's Thursday night, Citizens Business Bank Arena. The Fury taking on the San Diego Soccers. It doesn't get any bigger than this. Go check out Jermaine and Landon Donovan. One spot right here in Ontario. So, Jermaine, we appreciate the time, and best of luck. Get those points Thursday night against San Diego. Thank you, guys. We really do the best. All right, thanks, Jermaine. We appreciate it. So Jermaine Jones, former national team star with the United States, with Landon Donovan. So both these guys taking their, I call it the indoor war, but arena soccer. This is this is like WrestleMania. This is like the heavyweight championship <laughs> yeah, of the, the world poster, right there. Yeah. yeah, it really is. If you, It culminates really the biggest uh, soccer star we've had in the United States. And then to, to top it off with Jermaine Jones, a very, very cool uh, match, to say the least. I'm sure it'll be a packed house. Now, I know Landon Donovan's taking some heat. Because yes, he, did, he, he did not play for the Fury. He went to San Diego, and I even read his, uh, the transcript from his press conference when they introduced him uh, to the soccer, uh, San Diego soccer faithful, and he said, I can't wait to play for my new hometown. Whoa! Those are fighting words. Yeah, he's a retinue. He turned guy. his back on us. What's going yeah, on? I.E., don't say that. I mean, heck. 
That's that's a little disappointing to hear that. Very disappointing. But now the Fury get a shot at Landon Donovan uh, Thursday night right here in Ontario at Citizens Business Bank Arena. But today, I know we had the Quakes Media Day. We love Mike Linskog and the Rancho Cucamonga Quakes. Uh, But it was also 66ers Media Day. And, Jeff, you were out there this afternoon hanging out with those guys. Yeah, it it was a great time. I I got to interview a couple guys. I got to interview the the skipper of this team, Torrey Hunter Jr., who, you know, a lot of fans know of. Torrey Hunter Sr., one of the greatest baseball players, played for the Tigers, the Twins, and the Angels. Got to sit down with him and and, and really just kind of discussed what, what the season's going to be about. And, you know, coaching minor league baseball, you don't know what you're going to get. So it could be a different – it's a different team every year. Guys are up and down. But it was uh, – there was definitely an excitement going around. The first day of practice was today, and they open up the season on Thursday. They have been playing for the last six weeks, but they haven't played together. You know what cracks me up? When you said Torrey Hunter, you mentioned the Tigers first. Yes, I did. <laughs> Before, I think of him as a twin. I'm sure you yeah. think of him as an angel. Of course, of course. And the Tigers, the Tigers as well. So um, you just saw a little bit of video of a 66ers game, but Jeff was out there today. Let's check out the interviews uh, from not only Torrey Hunter Jr., who was it, Jordan Zimmerman? Jordan Zimmerman, the you, great third baseman. Yeah. And, and the skipper himself. Uh, so. Ryan Barba, right? Yeah. The skipper of the 66ers. So let's hear from the 66ers from Media Day. great athlete. Your father was a great athlete. What are some of the things that you've taken away from your, your father? Has he worked with you at, at all in the offseason? Yeah, he, all offseason. He's my hitting coach, my defensive coach, and everything like that. My mental coach, uh, whatever it may be. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just obviously the way he went about going, uh, coming to the field every day, getting his work in, trying to get better every day, um, trying to learn the pitcher, um, trying to get an edge wherever he can. Uh, I'm just trying to, you know, adapt those habits and, and the way he went about doing things. So if I, if I can get better at that and, and uh, crafting my abilities and you know, finding the, that edge over the opponent, um, then I think I'll be fine. Now, you were definitely on the radar of the Angels. What are your goals, say, two or three years down the line? I mean, yeah, hopefully get to the show. I mean, that's everyone's goal here. But uh, right now I'm just going to try to take it one game at a time and just do my best at every at-bat, and uh, after that, it's not really my decision what happens, so hopefully I can just have a quality at-bats throughout the year and let the rest take care of itself. Ryan Barber, the the manager, the the skipper of the 66ers. Uh, Coach, every year it seems you probably have a different team coming in. I know the expectations are always high, you know, you always have good players, but what is the biggest struggle at the beginning of the year for you as a manager of a minor league team? Uh, I don't know if you would call it a struggle. I mean, we we go out there, and, and again, you know, we don't we're not going to put any expectations on any players. We let them go out there. We have a plan for every single one of them, uh, whether it's on the mound, defensively, offensively, and we kind of just you know, we let them go out there and do their thing. Inland Sports. So that was the Inland Empire 66ers Media Day. They open the season Thursday night, San Manuel Stadium, uh, and they will take on the Lake Elsinore Storm. But, Jeff, you confirmed today, next Tuesday night, what are we going to be doing? We are going to be uh, doing this show. From the – what is the name of the official name of their – San Manuel Stadium. San, okay, San Manuel Stadium. Yeah. I know you've been called it different used to things. Be, was it Lake or Arrowhead? Yeah, Arrowhead, Arrowhead yeah. Or something? But, I don't know. But we will be doing the show from the game and looking forward to doing it from the arena or from the uh, stadium. It's going to be a great time. It's going to be a lot of fun. We'll probably end up at a Quakes game too. So if you're watching Mike Linskog, we didn't forget about you guys. No. We'll be out there soon at the Epicenter Lomar Field. Uh, but I was actually at San Manuel Stadium over the weekend to check out some Ukaipa High School baseball. And I, I kind of just stumbled into uh, one of the great pitching performances that we've seen at the high school level. Uh, Anthony, yeah, go ahead and roll that video. The Ukaipa T-Birds were taking on Carter High School, the county clash um, in CBL Citrus Belt League action. Tyson Heaton was on the bump for Ukaipa. If, if you're a baseball fan, you already know who this guy is. But if you're not, get to know this guy's name. I know Ukaipa has several guys that have made it to the big leagues. He's the next guy in line. Tyson Heaton tossed a perfect game against a very good Carter High School team. The Lions have a very good team. In fact, they've already beaten Ukaipa High School once this season. So for Tyson Heaton to go out there in front of a big crowd at San Manuel Stadium and toss an absolutely perfect game, it was something to see as Ukaipa is now tied with Carter for first place in the CBL. But um, yeah, it was... uh, Tyson Heaton leading the way. He's a great hitter as well. And that was coming off a third-place finish at the Boris Classic. 
Yeah, in fact, uh, I was talking to some high school coach, baseball coaches uh, this morning, and I talked about this game, and, and I, I felt a little bit of jealousy. And I, they said, hey, UKIP has been good for 25 years. There's only one school in the entire town. But I'm thinking, hey, the, the, uh, the total number of people in UKIP doesn't <laughs> rival some of the high schools that are in Riverside no. and the Inland Empire. And I said, it was man, that, that is just a great program, a great pitcher. And they have been great for years, but – you can't just equate it to being a one-school, t- one one-town situation, and Ukaipa has always been a juggernaut. They just seem to get it done. The great players come through. Of course, the reigning, the reigning CIF Southern Section Division II champions. Now they're in Division One, and they're, they're one of the best teams in Division One, ranked in the top ten in the latest CIF Southern Section poll. So let's hear from uh, Ukaipa skipper Ralph Grajeda. And I uh, talked to Coach about the game and about the season as well. Uh, they've had a very daunting uh, non-league schedule, and the Citrus Belt League is always tough, but they've risen to the occasion. So here's T-Birds head coach uh, Ralph Grajeda. You know, our first year into it and being invited was just an honor in itself. But to see that field of 16 out there, I mean, it was amazing. And for our kids to get through that, I thought it was a great job. Those are some of the best teams in Southern California, if not in the country. Um, we got to find out some things about ourselves. We uh, find out who our legitimate number three was and in Bradley Heacock and a freshman that we have, Wyatt Doty, on the mound. And, and we saw a lot of resiliency. There was no days off. And to be honest with you, I thought, you know, a couple, a couple different innings go a different way, and we're playing in that final against Chase Harris. So for where we are right now, very proud of them. It was a long week, and, um, yeah, it was a great job. Did a great job this week. We, uh, we talked about this after the uh, Cajon game last week. Um, Tyson Heaton had 16 punch outs in that game, by the way, but nobody's um, backing off from us. We, we're wearing that target. We understand there's no days off. Um, their approach has been much better. They understand if, if we get beat, we, if we're making somebody's year. Um, so we're back to the work thing. We're back to the execution thing and taking each game serious and, and doing a good job with this. We've kind of done the same thing. I mean, it's a very talented field, Division One, but we haven't changed our approach and effort. Nothing's really changed. I think um, there's, we can't sneak up on anybody anymore. Um, people know who we are, and because of that, people are going to show up and play us toe-to-toe. So we're ready for that challenge. And, Jeff, if you noticed in the background, your guy Styx was out there uh, leading the field crew. I saw Styx today. In Whoop. fact, uh, I oh, said hello to him. <laughs> I'm telling you, the guy has the best gams. You go out to a, a 66ers game, there's a guy on the road crew who has the best legs of any man I've ever seen. <laughs> He's got the longest legs, and I'm telling you, they're wonderful sticks. Oh, my gosh. Okay, we're going to be back out there at San Manuel Stadium because they have another county clash coming up on April 12th. Anthony, can you punch up that first one? It's going to be real against the Royal Valley. We're going to have that game live on IEMG. We're also going to have Notre Dame and Aquinas. So they're actually back-to-back same night. Notre Dame and Aquinas will play at 7. And the game right before it at 4 o'clock is Rialto against the Royal Valley. We're going to broadcast those games live on IEMG. So they'll be live on the IEMG uh, YouTube channel and then tape delayed for TV3. And there it is, Rialto and Arroyo Valley, all part of that county clash at San Manuel Stadium. Now, can you still call it a holy war if it's baseball? Sure. I guess you can. Yeah. Do they or, play for the a, shield? They should. They should. They or, should. or a bat, a, a gold bat. Something, right? Yeah. It's not a league game anymore, but still a huge rivalry. Well, yeah, you know, or you could, you could do, you know, Game of Thrones is coming back. You could, there was like a medal, certain medal that they have there. You could call it like a, you know, like a tough something. Tough what about like a baseball? Stormbreaker? That'd be you know, cool. we're seeing where I'm yeah, going. Marvel, you, yeah, I, saw you went, I saw where you went there. Stormbreaker. You went. And finally, let's wrap this up. Uh, Anthony, we have some pictures of Norco High School. All they do is win. Uh, they won again. Um, and <laughs> they're 18 and 0. They've allowed 10 runs all season long. All season, Jeff. Good Not just golly. last week or anything. I thought it ended when Taylor Dawkins won the National Player of the Year. No, they just, Apparently, they just reload every single season. They're 18-0. and 0. They're number one uh, in the section, in the state, in the country, in the galaxy. Uh, they have got the Michelle Carew Classic coming up this week, which has a lot of good teams. And then next week, it's back to the land of the Big Eight. They're going to play King and Santiago, which is tough probably their two toughest games in league although king's kind of struggling a little bit right now but they're always good so if norco can get to the uh, michelle crew classic and i assume they will and get past next week in big eight league play uh, they should be undefeated when they go to the playoffs as the number one seed for division one the reigning champions in division one heck yeah they, they just have a, they have 
handful of rings. Remember last year, they celebrated the championship at Angel Stadium. That's right. That's right. They went to the Big A and uh, showed off those CIF Southern Section uh, championship banners, shirts, all the, all the stuff that goes along with it, the swag. All right. Uh, listen, they hung a banner last year, right? UCR softball making that postseason that's run. That's right. So we're going to talk UCR softball when we come back here on the one and only Inland Sports TV show. What's going on, guys? This is Ray Bass from Boost Performance Training. You're watching the Inland Sports Show with the one and only Pep Fernandez. The Inland Sports Show is brought to you by Spoiled. Quick quality oil change. Spoil yourself and your car at Spoiled. Kin Sporting Goods. They have all of your sporting gear needs, letterman's jackets, and team uniforms. And Boost Performance Training with Coach Ray Bass. Athletes of all levels and all sports are going to boost performance training in Corona. I thank God, first of all. I, I thank the great people that I've got around me that uh, help support me, the people that work for me. As I started, if it wasn't for the people around me, uh, we probably wouldn't be here right now, but I've got a great staff. I've got great people that do stuff for us outside the store, and uh, we've been very, very fortunate. Our service is impeccable, and we just keep trying to get better every year. We can do online stuff for your teams, as well as, like I said, the screen printing, the embroidery. We also have three women that do extra sewing for us, uh, like tackle tool on uniforms, or uh, the bling or rhinestones for, for different shirts for the ladies. That's why we have uh, certain racks just just for certain schools, and and the uh, the fun the fun about that is that it turns into other schools that may come in here that uh, aren't as close that we can do stuff for them as well. We've had very very good customers throughout the years, and it's just been it's just been a blast. on the customer here. Believe it or not, that is the biggest thing for customers on an oil change. They just want to, the convenience of coming in, driving in, getting it done, and, and driving out. Just greet them, get them going, and they're done in about 10 minutes or so. We don't push any sales on them. We do the oil change, uh, and I think that's that's what sets us apart is our, our customer service. Vacuumed and cleaned your windshield for you as well. Everything's looking pretty good. Come into us one time, believe me, we'll spoil you and you'll be ready to come back the next time. And a welcome back to the Inland Sports TV show. We're talking a little UC Riverside softball. Join us live on the set, Brittany Garcia, Melanie Almos. Thanks, ladies, for stopping by. So, so right before the show, you were lifting weights? Like pumping iron, or what was going on? In the afternoon. Yeah, we had practice. We had practice and then weights. Weights. And then class. So yeah. Full schedule. We're in the same class, so it was kind of nice. We just kind of came over together. And what class is that? <laughs> it's actually called death. <laughs> Wait. Wait, hold it's on. Religious, Are we live right now? <laughs> a religious it's, study class yeah. on death. On death. Yes. So it's like death 101, or is it I upper guess. division course, like death It's actually 300? an upper div course, yeah. yeah. Death 300. <laughs> uh, so there you go. <laughs> You want to know about death. death. I won't go too far into it, but yeah, but what do you, what do you learn? Um, uh, I think it's like the experience before death and like what kind of 
like thoughts you're going through, I guess. I don't know. It's, yeah, it's today was our first class. Yeah. So we'll oh, get back okay. to kind of like intro. Okay. I'm cutting. So. Okay. I'll cut you some slack. I'm like, okay, well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I, I'm sure opposing teams uh, felt like they were dealing with death as they came to UCR during this winning streak. I'm sorry. I had to go there. Um, but this team is playing very, very well right now. Um, Melanie, let me start with you. What was it about this winning streak and then able to take the series against Cal Poly as you open up Big West Conference play? It's, it seems like this team is. Um, gotten better maybe as you got closer to conference play? Yeah, um, we definitely took it one game at a time. We didn't look at the bigger picture. We just stayed in the moment and knew that each game mattered. So let's just play it, give it our all each game. And that's what we did. And Brittany, you were part of the team that, you know, reached the postseason last year, which is so awesome mm -hmm. for, for UCR softball. Um, you know, there were some returning players from last year's team, but does this year's team feel different? Did you feel like um, the expectations were different after making the postseason last year? Um, it was definitely a big eye-opener just because we had so many newcomers this year. Like, almost half our team is newcomers, so a lot of rookies. Um, but we have a lot more raw talent, I feel like, this year. And it's really exciting to see how they grew within a couple of months and just from winter to spring. Um, but, yeah, I'm really excited to keep moving up with this team. And Melanie, you start at Grand Terrace High School, which is, what, maybe two miles yeah. from UCR. <laughs> I mean, it's literally your backyard. Literally. Um, I know you started your college career at Oklahoma, and now you're at UCR. Is it pretty cool to be playing in front of family and friends yes. and wearing the, you know, the UCR blue here? Yeah, I love it. I love repping Riverside and getting a chance to see all my family and friends and old coaches come out and come to my games. It's the best. And Brittany, are you guys finding different ways to win? I, like, I look at the box yeah. score, and sometimes there's like a ton of home runs <laughs> yeah. or, or a dominant pitching performance, and I'm like, I can't yeah. wrap my head around what kind of team this is. I yeah. mean, how would you describe what's going on? Um, I almost think like we're, we're really focused on winning each inning this year. So it's like, you know, our coaches are super on us about, okay, we got to score two runs this inning, or we got to do this this inning, and shut them down if they, if they score or whatever. But um, I think that's like our new kind of motto this year is taking inning by inning instead of looking, you know, we have to win Big West, yeah. but we have to win every game in order to get there. So kind of chunk it down to just yeah. smaller goals, mm -hmm. like inside the game. And if you yeah. win those and, and Melanie, whether it's in the circle or at the plates, um, I feel like you're just feeling right at home uh, here at UCR. Can you talk about your season so far? Yeah, um, it's fun playing and I'm just there to do whatever my team needs me, whether it's at first pitching, hitting. Um, I'm just there in the moment, and whichever way I can contribute to them, I will. So, yeah. Now, I could be wrong, but has there just been a crazy amount of home runs this season, or am I just wrong? Do you guys always just hit a lot of home runs? I just haven't noticed. <laughs> There's definitely, a, this is like, <laughs> since the four years I've been here, this is the most like we've ever had, and like so far. So it's actually really exciting. And you guys you spend a lot of time in the weight room. Right? Yes. <laughs> yes. And, and, and. That was one thing that we definitely switched up this year was weights. Like we were really focused on getting bigger and stronger. So, so the weight room and yeah. death 300 <laughs> uh, equal yes. a lot of home runs <laughs> this yeah. season for, uh, for UC Riverside softball. So now you have Long Beach State, um, your next Big West series. Mm -hmm. Really, if you can win, what, two out of three in every single series, you're going to be in good shape at the end, right? Mm -hmm. As we kind of look at smaller goals instead of the big goal of winning Big West, I mean, is that safe to say? Like, if you can take two out of three in each series, you're going to be in good shape at the end? Right. Big West, it's a really tough division, and every team we play is really good. So we're just going to go out there and give it our best and hopefully take the series and see what happens. And Brittany, uh, you know, playing for Coach Palmer, in that postseason run that you guys had last year. Is that kind of a, a battle cry this year saying, hey, we did it last year. Yeah. Well, well, you know, let's maybe raise the bar, you know, NCAA yeah. tournament or whatever it might be, you know, this season. Um, I think our mindset this year was we are a post-winning or post-game winning team. So, like, Coach Palmer is always, like, we're always looking, like, we're going to make it a postseason. We're going to make it a postseason. It's not even a question. Mm -hmm. So, I think playing at that level every day at practice and, like, you know, even individuals just playing at that level is like we're expected to do it. So, which is a lot different than my first year with Nikki and Terry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Melanie, when you burst onto the scene, did you kind of feel that in the clubhouse? Like, you know, the girls were like, yeah, we had a great season last year. Like the expectations I feel like are, are really high for this team. You know, maybe it would be a, an NCAA tournament bid. Did you feel like the, the goals were set high for this team going into the season? Yeah, definitely. I mean, 
you always have goals as a team, but I knew coming in that this year was going to be different and we were going to do pretty great things. So I'm very excited. Now, do you, do you live at home? Yes, okay. I do. I was just wondering because I'm like, you live so close to campus. Yes, it's great. Is it great? <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> I love it. I love being home and... Yeah, so home cooked meals. Yes, home cooked meals. Do your laundry. I do my laundry, okay. <laughs> but I sleep. I mean, because that definitely it's hard. I mean, you got you got a lot of studying to do. You know, time to be doing laundry and stuff. Yeah. I didn't know, so. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> well, girls, congratulations on, on a great start uh, and taking that first series against Cal Poly, Long Beach State um, this weekend. And uh, before we wrap things up here, uh, hey, Anthony, we have a quick graphic. Uh, David Patrick has some basketball camps as we continue with uh, UCR-related things here. So David Patrick has his basketball camps coming up. In fact, Jeff, are you working those again? Of course I am. Of course you are. So <laughs> David Patrick has his basketball camps coming up. There are the dates there and the website, David Patrick Basketball Camps. Dot com for more information with uh, our good friend DP. He is one of the best. All right. Hey, thank you so much, ladies. It was awesome. Continued thank success and, uh, and best of luck in, uh, in Death 300. I want an update. <laughs> like, I'm so curious what this class yeah. is about. So. Yeah, we will update you. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Brittany. Thank you, Melanie. Thank Appreciate you. it. All right. When we come back, we'll talk, uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, with John Smith. He's the new uh, head basketball coach at Cal Poly, former head coach at Riverside City College, led the Tigers to a state championship. So we'll talk more hoops when we come back on the Inland Sports Show. What's going on, guys? Coach Bass here from Boost Training. We have a number of different options to help athletes develop here at the BPC, whether it's our off-season strength programming or it's our general sessions and even our one-on-one -on -one training sessions with either myself or one of our coaches here. So if you need that detailed coaching, book your one-on-one -on -one session today. Please feel free to contact me directly on Instagram at Boost Training or on Twitter, Boost underscore training, or contact me directly here at the gym. Our number is 951-532-4904. on the customer here. Right. Believe it or not, that is the biggest thing for customers on an oil change. They just want a, the convenience of coming in, driving in, getting it done, and, and driving out. Just greet them, get them going, and they're done in about 10 minutes or so. We don't push any sales on them. We do the oil change, uh, and I think that's that's what sets us apart is our, our customer service. Vacuumed and cleaned your windshield for you as well. Everything's looking pretty good. into us one time, believe me, we'll spoil you and you'll be ready to come back the next time. The Inland Sports Show is brought to you by Spoiled Quick Quality Oil Change. Spoil yourself and your car at Spoiled. Kin Sporting Goods, they have all of your sporting gear needs, letterman's jackets, and team uniforms. And boost performance training with Coach Ray Bass. Athletes of all levels and all sports are going to boost performance training in Corona. And welcome back to the Inland Sports TV show. We're live. <laughs> <laughs> My chair was short. <laughs> hey, I think you broke the news. Although we kind of saw the writing on the wall that John Smith would be the new head basketball coach at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. That's my buddy, of course. That's your guy. That's your guy. And you were kind of, uh, I guess, campaigning for him in several different stops. But he finally uh, got a head coaching job at the Division I level. And we couldn't be more thrilled. He's a friend of the show. Uh, John, welcome to the show. How are you doing tonight? The new head coach of the Mustangs. I'm doing well. What's going on, guys? Can you hear me? Yeah, we got you. Hey, we are so Excited for you, Coach Smith, to uh, land that Cal Poly job. Um, I know getting a Division I head coaching job was something that you were looking forward to. Um, what's, what's the first order of business now that you're head coach of the Mustangs? Uh, just to 
try and make sure that these guys are just by the desire. You know, uh, it, it has long coming. It's a blessing that I'm here now and, and, and can't wait to get started. Now, John, I, you know, I watched the press conference. In fact, I, I, was in Cal, I was in San Luis Obispo when you and I uh, talked about when you got the job. And I, watching the press conference, I, I, the, most, the best thing I took away from that is that you thanked your family first. And you have one of the best families of, of anybody, not just uh, in the Inland Empire, in the entire world. Your daughter's a, a, an outstanding player at uh, UC, UC Berkeley. Your son was a great player for you at uh, Cal State Fullerton. Your, your youngest daughter is now a blossoming player. But I want to say the one thing that stood out the most was that you thanked your wife. And your wife, it takes something to be a coach's wife. Can you tell us a little bit about that relationship that you have with your wife and how wonderful she, she has been a foundation for you? Yeah, you know, like I said in the press conference, it, 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 it takes a special person to be a coach's wife. And, and Kelly, by far, is in the Hall of Fame of coaches' wives. I mean, the sacrifice, the dedication, the, the, the support is unbelievable. And, and she has the personality to be the first lady of the country, let alone the first lady of Cal Poly men's basketball. <laughs> you know, um, the community here has already embraced her. Um, she, she's just so instrumental in, in everything that I'm doing, and I can't thank the Lord enough to have uh, such a beautiful spirit a beautiful woman right next to me doing what I'm doing. Well, Coach, this is a true story. Jeff and I have had conversations about if we, if we lived anywhere else, where would we want to live? And I, I think for Jeff, too, like San Luis Obispo was like on the top of our list. It's beautiful up there. Um, it's, it's such a wonderful place to have a family. Are you excited, not only locale, it's a great place, but uh, to act, you know, run your own program, finally get a chance and put your stamp, your brand of basketball um, you know, on the court and, and, and see what you can do up there with the Cal Poly team that you know, struggled last season, um, but they've had some success in the past. Yeah, you know, um, being, being in, this, in this part of the country is unbelievable. Like you said, the Central Coast is, is, is phenomenal. But being at Cal Poly – you know, the, the high academic institute that it is, there's a lot to, to, to sell to a, a recruit, and, and, and you don't have to sell. I mean, uh, you get the number one academic institution, I feel, in the state of California and, and the greatest place in California. I mean, it's just it's picturesque every day that I wake up. I, I, I can't pinch myself enough to, to believe that I'm the head coach here. Now, now, John, what, what is the brand of basketball we're going to see uh, from you and the Mustangs this upcoming season? Uh, much like you've always thought uh, throughout my career, um, we're going to be tough-minded. Uh, we're going to defend 94 feet. Uh, we're not going to concede a basket. Uh, we're going to share the ball. We're going to play fast. Uh, we're we're going to try and just make sure that we are moving the ball side, top side, and, and uh, you know, put some pressure on the defense to – to defend the whole force, not just one part of the force. So we got we got some work to do to get implementing that that system. But I'm um, happy that I'm here early enough to get it started. Well, Coach, we appreciate the time. Thank you for checking in. We're excited for you. We're going to be cheering you on every game, except for maybe two of them throughout the season. But every every other game, <laughs> we want. We, hey, Coach, we do want to see you successful. We're we're very excited for you. And I know Jeff's a very long uh, long time friend, and I know he's been personally very thrilled to see you get this position. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I, I, I appreciate the whole time. And let me, I need to one person also. It was a human being that wrote a letter of rest for me, and that chemical stone. And I think the ADA UCR, she has been phenomenal in, in helping me get here as well. All right. Thank you, Coach. We appreciate the time. Let's do this again soon. All right. Thank you very much. Good luck, John. All right, that's John Smith, the new head basketball coach at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Won a state championship at RCC, um, deep Riverside roots, and uh, now he gets to take over his own program. Yeah, and, and remember, he was the head coach at Valley View, and then it was uh, the head coach at College of Southern Idaho, and then was the head coach at San Bernardino Valley College, which they took him to the state uh, championship playoffs there. 
and then won a state championship at Riverside. Only one other coach had done that, and that's the great Jerry Tarkanian, whom John played for at UNLV. So it all comes full circle, and I can't wait to see him get his own program and get it going at the D1 level. Did you write his bio? Like, you know I, everything about him. Hey, we used to play in the sandbox together, for God's sake. <laughs> no joke. I mean, when we were little kids, I, I remember going to basketball camps with him, you know, second and third grade, uh, driving our bikes around Riverside just trying to find pickup games. Uh, John Smith has been one of my dearest and closest friends my entire life. And I just knew he would be at the pinnacle of success at the basketball level, and I couldn't be happier for him. You should be his agent. I should be. You should be his agent. Nobody knows. You. Nobody knows. I, I, I should come out of retirement and coach with him. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you thought about it. You thought about it. I didn't everybody. think about it. No, no, that's about not it. happening. All right, real quick, uh, before we wrap up this segment, um, Anthony, punch up the graphic. We got All-Star Basketball coming up this Saturday. It's the best of the best girls basketball All-Star game at Arroyo Valley High School. A lot of the best uh, players in the Inland Empire will be there, Southern California. I heard there's even some players from Arizona, so it's going to be a big, big showcase. We'll have it live on IEMG. It's the best of the best All-Star game, Arroyo Valley High School. I guess they used to have it a couple years ago. It went away. And now it's back. Um, 